Hey y'all, Chelsea and Danny here. Enjoy this episode of Today's Homeowner here on YouTube. This week on Today's Homeowner, we're helping a young couple improve their backyard with a new deck that's friendly for the whole family. This is the hole that I drilled with the... The auger? That's it. Jason and Kendall Outlaw are the owners of this almost 70-year-old home and the parents of this beautiful 14-month-old little girl. Like most new parents, they're learning on the job. Jason is a high school teacher and coach, while Kendall juggles college classes and their daughter, Kennedy. Kennedy is busy. She is on her feet. She's all over the place. Um, and she loves outside. She loves being outside, but we don't get to keep her outside as much because it's a little bit dangerous out there for her. This area just outside the back door is what has Kendall concerned, and that's what we're hoping to help with. When you walk out, immediately you're standing on a concrete slab. Of course, if Kennedy falls going up or down those stairs, you know, we're looking at a head injury or a serious break or, you know, something that's, that's not going to be good. And so it's a huge concern. I spend most of the time that I'm outside with her chasing her away from the stairs. These two have made several improvements to their home, but they're discovering that parenting can make DIY projects a bit more challenging. We've both been trying to finish school, so we get married and throw a baby into the mix, and, you know, it's just made things around here a little hectic. So, so home improvement, um, finishing things that we start, it, it tends to take a lot longer just because we get so little time together anyway. So it, it prevents us from getting some of the things done that we want to get done. Like building a deck in that problem corner out back. Yeah, we've talked about it a lot and having a place to just sit in the morning and have coffee yeah. um, and, you know, let her down and run around um, while we do that. It's just a nice somewhere for us to be in the mornings. And, and like he said, we just don't have a place to be when we go outside. And the house and the backyard, you know, we, we put down the concrete in the back. We, we got the new shed put up. So as far as it, it all, I think, looks so much better than it did but there's the eyesore in the corner and I just feel like that's holding it back from what it could be. So let's see what we can do about that. Yeah, so you see here, this is what we were talking about. Boy, I see so many little safety issues here. Oh I yeah, mean, <laughs> well, you know, some of them you can't see, for instance. Right, right. I mean, you know, that's, that's a danger in itself. I've fallen off of that several times. I can see Kennedy slipping right under oh, there. Oh yeah, several of these are loose over here, uh, you know. Uh, the, the broken up um, uh, rock here. The, the well, whole well, ultimately, what would you guys think? What have you thought about, dreamed about having out here? I'll be honest, man. Just a beautiful, nice, flat deck that's, yeah. that's level with, with where these pads are now. Right, you know, just right. come straight across and maybe one stair system so that it's not uh -huh. so dangerous for yeah. her. I'm not yeah. sure this really needs to stay. Well, you know, and, and, it's, and, and it's unsafe. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a trip hazard for mm -hmm. sure. And another thing about this, my, my sister actually has been telling me for a very long time now, if we decide to do a deck or we, we end up getting this out of here, she would love to use it. Oh, really? Uh, yes. Oh, so we might get a little free labor if we decide to. That's right. Is she that will right? Come, she will excellent. come grab it We can herself. use all That's the right. labor we can get. So Alan and I began taking measurements and making plans. I've created this wonderful artist rend rendering. Oh. So, door here, <laughs> right. over there, this door here, okay. and then if we just stop the deck right in here, mm -hmm. and then let the steps come up right here, then yeah, we can okay. have a, a real handrails all around. Did you see that? Yeah, I did. Did you see, like, look, look at that, and, and they have a little girl, Kennedy, and, I mean, enough said. Yeah, huh? really. And I say just build it independently and not even tie it to the house. Okay. Let me ask you this. I, I see this sandbox over here. Yeah. So they don't go back and forth. What yeah. do you think about uh, integrating it into a deck? Well, if we did, right in here. Yeah. And we could kind of do that as a surprise and not let, not let them know about right, it. Right. So a few days later, Mike and Tim from our crew arrive with the material so we can get to work. Kendall says she came to work. She came to work? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You put those gloves on, Kendall, and we've got a special little tool for you here. Oh! oh. <laughs> Swing it uh, right Here, on. let me point again, right here. <laughs> there up it is. high, up high. There you go. Damn. So you could uh you could do batting practice I with could Jason. Do batting yeah. practice. I just need to work on my aim. <laughs> well, 
Already took care of that. We may not need this jackhammer. Huh, I know it. But since Kendall seems so eager, we let her give it a shot. There you go. Okay, we only need to do that 12 more times. The brick steps come down pretty easily, but those concrete slabs are more stubborn because they're reinforced with wire. So we let Coach Outlaw work out his frustrations on it. Once we cut the reinforcement wire, we can move the pieces out. <laughs> Let's try that again. Why'd you do that to me? You ready? Uh -huh and get to work on the other set of steps. Replacing a wooden handle on a shovel is a simple enough job. So simple, you don't think there'd be a way to do it wrong, but there actually is a wrong way to do it, and it's done wrong all the time. If you take a look at a handle, you'll see that there's face grain, identified by these oval patterns, then there's straight grain, nice parallel lines of grain. Now, if you install the handle this way, it's much weaker than if you install it with the straight grain facing up. It's similar to a 2x4. If you imagine a 2x4 on edge, how it's very strong, has no flex, but a 2x4 on flat will bend. That's the same principle of why these handles will last longer if you put the straight grain up. And if you don't, this is the result. This is a shovel I was using earlier, and the handle snapped off. And if you look closely, you'll see why. Here's the face grain facing up. They should have, the manufacturer should have rotated at 90 degrees so the straight grain would be facing up. This handle would have lasted a lot longer. So the trick to remember is whenever you're replacing a wooden handle on any tool, always put the straight grain facing up. This week we're helping Jason and Kendall hey, demolish some old concrete stairs and a crumbling flagstone patio to make way for a new deck that'll be a safer place for their daughter Kennedy to play. How's that going? Oh, that doesn't look too good. It's not good at all. It's, it's sitting on a slab and it was cemented to the slab and it's got a rock solid bond. I was hoping that was just like a little skim coat or I something. Was too. Let me see, we got the jackhammer right yeah. here. Hey Jason, come here, come here a second. You know, the flagstone will probably come up fairly easy after we get it started, so Kendall's right. sister will be able to get, get those even though a lot of it will break up, but we got a fair amount of jackhammer we're gonna have to do to get this out so we can plant this grass in here. So what do you think? Uh, to be honest with you, it looks like it's about time for me to go coach some football. Kendall seemed to be handling that thing pretty <laughs> well. are you leaving? <laughs> Won't you let her have that? I'll see you guys later. Oh, I ain't like that. Oh, boy. Man. No. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. Alan and I keep wrestling the jackhammer to give Kendall a brief break, but soon her sister Kelly arrives, and the two of them start moving off the flagstones Kelly is saving for a project at her house. OK. <laughs> We're making good progress, but the heat is taking a toll. To speed up the hole digging, we've rented an auger. Got a new toy for you, Kendall. All right. <laughs> After a quick lesson, you're going to square your, your feet with your shoulders. All right. And let, let it do the job for you. Kendall tries her hand with an auger. And so far, nothing seems to trip this lady up. We're supporting this deck on post independent of the house so that we don't have to do any flashing along the edges. These posts are not just pressure treated, they're treated for ground contact, so they'll hold up under the dirt and several pounds of fast setting concrete. We're pulling strings along the outer edge to be sure the posts are perfectly aligned before we set them in concrete and check them for plumb with a level. In the middle of the deck, a two by eight set a few inches lower will support the deck joist mid-span. So now we're ready for those joists. Oh man, that looks great. I love the little ledger strip. You know, we're almost through with this first day of work. We've got a lot of work done, but let me point out a couple things that we've done because there's a lot of different ways to build a deck. First of all, we built it completely independent of the house so it's not attached in any way. Another thing that we've done here is you see the little two by two here that we call a ledger strip. Now when you're putting your joist up you can just nail them straight to the piece of wood here when you have a ledger strip nice and level and this is a great way to support it. Now you can use the metal clamps or metal straps to hold it but they're going to rust sooner or later you're going to have some problems with this. This is a foolproof way to make sure you've got a good, strong deck. Hey, we got a little time left today. We're gonna to see if we can't get some of these joists in place. Using the ledger strip does require the extra step of notching the end of every joist so it hooks over that ledger. But it also simplifies the installation because it's so easy to position the joist for accurate spacing and hold it in place while you're nailing it. 
we'll wrap up day one with some small jobs like cutting the inside post flush with the joist and driving all those dozens of lag screws we need to secure the band joist. Early the next morning, Kendall fills Jason in on the work we did after he left the first day. Yes, uh, this is the hole that I drilled with the the auger. That's it. Yeah. Well, it looks good. We had a picture, but it's bigger than I than really what was in my head. I'm I'm so excited about it. Well, now. if you're happy, I'm happy. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so while Kendall sees Jason off to work, Alan gets started laying out the sandbox location. I've Ooh. got this thing, so I'm going to hang this up on the wall okay. and see what you think. How about the uh, box? You think it's going to work okay? Yeah, the sandbox is going to work out great, so I, I think everything is fine. I'm, I'm measuring it out right now to, to place it. Perfect. Let me get me a nail and okay. I'm going to hang my thermometer. Now, by the way, let me say this about this sandbox. This is a really simple design. I've used the same two by sixes that the joists are, screwed some five quarter on the bottom of it. That's for the, the bottom. Of course, it's going to be holding sand, but I've got all these gaps in here because we've got to get let water go through. So that's for the water to go through. I've got landscape cloth. That's going to keep the sand in place. All we got to do is set it in place, get our joists in, and we're ready for decking. You know, if you're building an outdoor living space like a deck, you need to put some stuff on it for yourself, too. And one of those would be a great grill. And we found one, didn't we, Shay? Yes, a great grill Weber Spirit has. Uh, one of my favorite um, components is you can use this griddle that you can put fajitas onions and um, you can do pancakes. See, that is really cool because you've got a full surface here to do hamburgers, hot dogs, things that you would usually do on a grill. But like Shay did, she popped that center out, she put this in, you can do fajitas, like she said, you can scramble your eggs. You can do other inserts that are sold as well. This does uh, chicken roasting. You just slide your chicken on there. You can also do pizza, pizza. too. Right, pizza. This is fantastic. And let me tell you another feature that this Weber grill has. It has a propane indicator. So that tells you where you are. Usually you have to run out before you know that your propane tank needs to be refilled. I'll tell you what, let's put it in the box. Let's take it up to the register. I think I found what I'm gonna get myself. I'm ready to go. <laughs> Our deck addition for Jason and Kendall is flying right along. Alan and I have completed installing the sunken sandbox he built for their daughter, Kennedy. Then Mike and Tim got busy on the steps. These pre-cut stair stringers they're using from Yellowwood make that easy for DIYers. Just measure the height of the deck and divide that number by seven. Then round up to get the number of steps you'll need. Hello Man, there. It sure is hot out here. How yes, are you guys doing? Yes, it is very hot. The temperature says 102. This is awesome. Jason is going to be really excited that we've got the, the water pulled yeah, we out here. We were able here. to just um, extend it out here so that he'll have his hose out here and so forth. What is this? Well, <laughs> we, we know that Kennedy loves her sandbox, yes. and that sandbox was just way too small for her. Yes. So this is actually going to be a sunken sandbox in the deck. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. It's going to be cool, huh? That is fantastic. She is going to be so excited, and this is going to be great. All right, I'm ready to get my hands dirty again. Okay. What you got for me? Well, I'll tell you what, a lot of times people wait to put the underskirting in the lattice uh, last thing. Yeah. We're going to do it right now where it's a lot easier to get to, so you can help us with that. Awesome. All right. The first step for the skirting is adding blocking for it to attach to, and Alan manages to give our petite new friend the dirtiest job yet. <laughs> She's actually doing it. <laughs> we can rip the 4 by 8 sheets of lattice in half to get the pieces we need. But you have to be aware that lattice can be fragile. Oh, oh. <laughs> is this a joke? Are you guys... No, it's, a, it's not a joke. You're oh, much boy. stronger than you look. Once we get all the lattice in place, we mark and cut the post to the height we'll need for the handrails. All right, Alan, we got all our posts cut, ready for our handrails. As soon as the decking's done, you ready for some decking? Um, no. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm worn out. It's been a long day. Can we it, do that tomorrow? It has been yeah. hot, but it's getting cooler right now. Look, we're down to 97, 97. degrees. Yeah. Nice cool spell, but it is getting kind of late, so let's wait on that. But the guys just about have the slab ready to go. Okay. We can have them pour that. Me and you and Kendall can go ahead and put the grass down, get it watered in. We'll be a step ahead. I'll go get her. All right, man. Mike and Tim are mixing up more of the quickrete fast setting mix to fill the pie shaped void between the deck and the existing driveway. Finally, to wrap up day two, we'll put in some sod where the old flagstone patio used to protrude into the yard. I just don't understand why Alan can't be as energetic as I am about this project. More grass. So at the start of day three, all we have left is the decking itself and the handrails. 
while we're working out the kinks with that, Kennedy is patiently playing in her old sandbox until the new one is complete. Chelsea and Kendall are putting in two layers of landscape fabric in the sandbox, but the closer they get to completion, the less patient Kennedy seems to be. Oh, now you, you want to you play with the scissors? Yeah. There we go. All right, we are ready for sand. You want to ready for sand? Are you ready for sand? It looks like nap time for this little trooper. So her mom and Chelsea can help out with the decking. All right, we got some help. Yeah, show us what these okay. contraptions are. Hop over here, let me show you what we're doing. Kendall, you do that side. Turn the drill on first. Boom. And then you put Boop. your weight behind That's it and it. kind of uh -huh. push it in. With all these hands working at once, the deck boards go down quickly. Jason dropped by between school and practice, so he jumps in to help Alan with the lid for Kennedy's sandbox. Oh, yeah, I like a glove. There's your handle for reaching in. Oh, that's awesome. Well, I'll tell you what, little Kennedy is going to love that sandbox, and she'll be safe while she's playing in it, because we're going to build the right type of handrail. And anytime you're doing anything in building a deck, you got to make sure those handrails are very, very safe. Now, you saw earlier how we took our 4x4 four four posts, put them all the way down into concrete, so they're not going anywhere. Now we're working on the actual handrail, and what's important here is that you keep your spindles or your balusters fairly close together. Good rule of thumb, about every six inch centers so that you have about, in this case, about four and a half inches between it. That's a good safe distance. Pre-assembling these things while they're laying flat is the way to go because gravity is working for you, not against you. Then you just need a few screws to attach them to the post. After that, a cap is made from the five-quarter deck board to finish it off. Finally, we're putting in a handrail for the adults right. and a separate one for little Kennedy. Kennedy, I want you to decide on how high you want your handrail, okay? Okay? Come here. Come here. Hold this. Yeah. You yeah, put your hand on it there. You can hold, hold that. It. Hold that. Here you go. Put the hand on it. Is that a good height? Okay. Is that good? Okay. <laughs> One of the things people often ask about wood decks is how long do I have to wait before I seal or stain the pressure treated wood? The short answer is around 30 days, but there's a number of factors to consider, including the weather and how long the wood sat in the lumber yard or home center. The best way to know for sure is to test the wood. This is what the folks at Yellowwood suggest. Pour a few drops of water on the deck. If it beads up, it's still too wet to coat, and you'll need to wait a while. If it absorbs the water easily, it's ready for sealer or stain. Whether you choose a clear sealer or a semi-transparent stain, look for one with a long warranty and UV stabilizers. Then apply it according to the manufacturer's instructions and you'll be giving your new deck the best protection possible. Once we completed building Jason and Kendall's deck, they went to work with Chelsea's help to decorate it with furniture and flowers and to fill up the sandbox for Kennedy. In fact, Kennedy's even been practicing with her brand new handrail. Hey, this is a far cry from the old crumbling step she used to play on with the rickety handrails. The patio was full of trip hazards and that old stump in the corner, well, it was a major eyesore. Now this family has a large flat deck for everyone to enjoy. It fits right into the corner of the house and adds character and charm to the whole house. The single set of steps offers safe, convenient access for both grown-ups and toddlers alike. And once the flush cover is removed to reveal the sandbox, there's a great spot for Kennedy to play while mom and dad relax. Oh, <laughs> How you like that? There you go. Yeah. All right. I think she's going to have a little fun in that sandbox, and I hope we've been able to show you how simple building a deck in your backyard can be, whether you need a sandbox or not, but I would recommend picking a few cooler days than we chose. 100 degrees is a little too hot to be building any kind of deck around your backyard. I'm Danny Lipford. Thanks so much for being with us, and I hope we're able to see you next week right here on Today's Homeowner. All right, she's getting into it. You can really get an idea if you just open this up and see exactly what my little drawing shows. You tried to get me. <laughs> hey! All I'm that for that? I'm terrified of these. <laughs> 
Thanks for watching this episode of Today's Homeowner. And don't forget to like, comment, and hit the bell icon so that you'll be notified of new videos. And be sure to click around and watch some more videos while you're here.